think reading books is as much of a work as drawing. So I totally uh, have affili affiliation affinity to this particular activity. As a child, I was a voracious reader and I read all the time and I also drew all the time. So those are two activities I'm very used to. So it was very naturally conducive for me to that mode of production uh, included a reading, active reading. As a student at Cooper Union, I was a student of John Haydux, and of course for him, uh, work of literature is as important as any books of architectural history, and at that time, as you mentioned before, we didn't really talk about theories, philosophy books, poets, poetry, we read quite a bit, mm -hmm. and he talked about poetics in architecture in a way which is very uh, dry in a very serious way, not in... He is a romantic thinker, but he talked about all about architecture and poetics of architecture in the most matter-of-fact way. It's a very interesting combination of streetwise, pragmatism, deep thinking, philosophy, and idea of a more, very ethereal uh, effects of architecture. He talks about atmosphere a lot, the way he taught us is not only about designing buildings, but really going deep into the atmosphere of yeah. it. What would the quality of a space would be? How would people think? And even how would buildings behave within the urban context? That's why his books are about many of our buildings as characters, set of characters in a scene or in the film sets and so forth. There's about animation of inanimate objects that architects uh, trusted to imbue. So in a way, he didn't differentiate uh, architecture and, and books as much as very different type of production. He mm -hmm. thought, thought about, he even taught as books are architecture in its own right. Mm -hmm. And he practiced that. He had produced books as if they are pieces of architecture, but the difference was the portability, nomadic quality of books. And of course, he made his architecture nomadics, nomadic creatures, and then legible creatures, universally legible creatures to everybody to be able to participate in it. And mm -hmm. also, he talked about uh, being able to be in it, and he discussed about film as being architecture, as opposed to sculpture. The difference is that film, you could be in it, sculpture, you can't be in it, but it, not in terms of literal sense, sense entering into it, but in terms of immersion of experience. Mm -hmm. For that matter, reading book is an architectural experience from his description, and I do still feel that way. Mm -hmm. And I think it is, in a way, an imaginary uh, way of participating in spatial structure. I'm in a pursuit of relationship of philosophy, mm -hmm. theory, and how things are made. It's, there's a really gap in terms of thinking. Also, architects, we associate more with philosophy, and yet, if we do build things, we have these crafts, and we have definite way of how we think about building buildings, and somehow there's a disconnect, and I'm always trying to trace that, and I actually find uh, influence and interesting inflection at the uh, age of industrialization and when uh, technology changes in crafts, how people are made from handmade to machine made and now is a digital production. Like that's the basis of how I think about making buildings. Mm -hmm. So, but at the same time, I'm very much interested in the effects of architecture in terms of how it manifests itself a beyond object in terms of sequences of spaces, effects of lights. Uh, so the literature to me, especially Tanizaki, has a very amazing description of houses and spaces, the way people live, and the way people influence, in, especially Tanizaki's Makioka sisters, is, is uh, westernization, modernization, how the lifestyle changes. But it's a very much of a description of sisters of different age groups, of different personalities, how 
they will be affected by even observation of nature is being charged by influence of new transportation systems and the way the traditional way of living and rituals has been affected by perhaps a modern way of eating. Things like that, this miniature of everyday life which is beautifully uh, illustrated and described in books by especially Tanizaki and uh, Mishima. Mm -hmm. Those are quite uh, poignant to me. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I think the Japan is an architectural completion of his nearly quarter century of his writings. So it's been uh, uh, behind the entire body of work persistently. And this is just a written work, and you can imagine that um, uh, amount of thinking he has put through. So it's always in uh, undercurrent in his body of work. Um, I would think of him as one of the most important intellectuals, and he's as I mentioned to you before, the way he writes in Japanese is very close to uh, more of a Japanese literary tradition than the writing by any other architects I have ever seen. Sometimes it's obscure, sometimes ambiguous, but just try to decode one sentence of his in his architectural writing is a challenge in itself, but in, in itself has uh, amazing uh, scholarship, erudition, uh, intelligence. Uh, it's a very dense body of work he writes. No one can really translate it into English in fact. And that's how I read Japanese in architecture myself before I was even asked to write a forward. So it was very intimidating and I thought, why does he want me to write it? It's just, I don't even compare him to what I do. But uh, what's interesting to me is if you really look at his uh, body of work from literally perspective, mm -hmm. you can read his body of work not as just styles of architecture, but uh, styles which is manifestation of concept and different ideas of its time. In mm -hmm. Japanese of architecture, he talks about uh, beyond the role of architecture, beyond the role of architects to political issues, cultural issues, much more complex and resolved issues that architects have to confront in different era in Japan. And similar thing, he's always challenging and confronting. And many of a project might uh, be, from some people's point of view, unresolved. Mm. Uh, that's why his work is probably considered postmodern. Mm. But he provokes by uh, coming up with many of the styles and combines them. It's it's really a manifesto. That's right. what he does.